Anubhav, one of the first things I always love asking people is their personal journey. You know, you were an architect and you were, in, I mean, you were in the world of design, but in a very, very different way. So tell me about how did the world of design happen to you? So uh, it's an interesting story. I grew up in Delhi and um, I've had the good fortune of living in many cities. In my head, you know, I've always been a sort of a time traveler, daydreamer, storyteller. And uh, I would often think if I could make a profession out of it. So I couldn't find anything. And uh, I was quite good at math at school. And not knowing what to do, because I was good at math, I was studying to be a mathematician, I would imagine. I was studying math. And I happened to chance upon uh, the entrance test of, um, of a, you know, when you need to get into architecture school, you have to, you have to do a test. And one of the questions on the paper was, Imagine if you're a seed on a slice of a papaya, what would the room look like to you? Draw it. So I was like, wow, what are these guys smoking, right? <laughs> and, and I thought either these guys are crazy or they're geniuses. And the rest is history. So I took the test. I got into architecture school. Um, and, and I realized later that I was able to do all those things that I wanted to make a profession out of in architecture school. So um, I got to go to MIT, I studied there, I taught there, um, and, and I got to travel the world, live in different cities, um, and you know, design and build everything from a spoon to a city. So you know, it's been a great journey so far. So what inspires you? What about design, or is it companies, or is it a person? What is it that actually inspires you? you know, just like math, I've always thought of design as a platform for problem solving, uh, for um, you know, creating beauty, for telling stories, and, and, and so on. And lately, I've been fascinated by the, the bridge between design and business. I find that uh, you know, a lot is lost in translation. You know, they're sort of the creative guys, you know, the guys who wear hoodies who are sitting in one corner, and then they're the business types. Um, and and you know, Apple changed the world. Uh, other companies, Google, IDEO, and uh, I found that what they were doing was they, was they were bringing these worlds together. Yeah. And especially in the corporate world, uh, you know, I saw design as a business horizontal, not a business vertical. And I thought, you know, maybe this is a great way of doing the right thing, making things for business, making it pleasurable for people to use, creating unique experiences, and telling great stories about it. So that's what fascinates me about design, that I, I, I can use it to do so many different things. Yeah. So, and you were in the US, you were studying, and you were working, and all that stuff, and you were traveling all over the world, and you decided to come back to India. So what is it that made you want to come back to India? So I came back to India about four years ago, and I was, I think, about 12 years I was overseas, and I, like I said, I had the good fortune of living in America, in the UK, in China. Um, and, um, you know, like every other good NRI, when you have dinner with your friends, you know, one day we will go back. Yes. And <laughs> one day we just decided, my wife and I, we just decided to take the plunge. She thought we were crazy. I said, what am I going to do? Um, and I looked at, you know, the, 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 our profession. And, and in this case, you know, it had to do with development, architecture, buildings, building cities and so on. And, and I found that, A, India was changing and booming. The West was slowing down. But more importantly, 90% of India was being developed through private enterprise, right, which is for profit mostly. And I found there was a gaping hole on the other side, whether it's on the public sector side, whether it's on the regulation side, and, and so on. And in the West, you're used to a, a balance to, you know, in, in trying to do the right thing and building for business and so on and so forth. So I thought that was a great opportunity mm. um, for me to, to fill that, that gap. And, you know, this is where you get lucky uh, in terms of patronage, in terms of vision, in terms of the people you get to work with. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I came back uh, uh, to Godridge and, uh, you know, there was a vision, there was patronage. And, um, you know, we've been so far, we've been trying to do the right thing, having fun with it and uh, hopefully delivering for business. And people are enjoying what, what we're creating. You know, it's interesting, this trend that you're talking about, which is uh, design being part of business. So. You know, our friend John Maida is part of Kleiner Perkins now in U.S. and he's been writing extensively about how even when you start companies, one of the co-founders is a design person because before it was, sure. you know, it was a business person and the tech person 
maybe a finance person, they are the ones who started it. And now a design person is also part of the, uh, yes, part I, of the company. I think things have changed. So, you know, in, in way back when design was part of engineering, then it con kind of got sucked out. Then it had leanings towards marketing, sales, customer centricity, and so on. And I think people have realized that um, it is not one thing or another. It is that platform. It is a dot connector. And, uh, you know, you see a lot of companies following suit. So, you know, Pepsi, 3M, Aston Martin in India, Tata, Godrej, um, where, you know, design today is part of the boardroom. You know, it is not, as Steve Jobs would say, it is not what it looks like and feels like. It is how it works. So, yeah. you know, the business of design and the design of business kind of go hand in hand. Yeah, because one of the reasons I wanted Anubhav to come is, in, what I'm passionate about is, as we are building new businesses, building new buildings, etc., the old buildings are going away. You know, I mean, the old is disappearing, so somehow the new glass and con concrete uh, actually glass and steel, not even concrete, buildings are coming up. So is it possible to preserve the old while you create the new? So actually, you know, Godrej had some factories, old uh, warehouses sure. that were going to be taken out to build it and you actually did something interesting with it. So can you tell us about it? Sure. Um, so I have the good fortune of working uh, on 50 projects across the country and hence scale. And one of the projects close to home uh, on our campus in Vikroli, uh, which is a beautiful campus. I don't know if you've been there. Uh, you know, it's a sprawling campus. We have the largest reserve of mangroves there. You know, when I first went to the site, I fell in love with two things. One was the greenery on the campus. And the other one was exactly what you said, that, you know, uh, these were sort of old factories. We had a soap factory and a few other factories. And obviously, the city had caught up. The factories were moving outside uh, the city. And, uh, you know, I, I work on the property side. So, you know, my challenge was to kind of um, look at, you know, regeneration, redevelopment, and, and so on. And, you know, one of the things that I'm passionate about is sustainability. So, you know, I thought, well, it's, it's very obvious to me, we, we've got to do what, whatever's possible to save the trees. And, and I, I thought, wouldn't it be nice to also save some of the old buildings? Yeah. So, uh, you know, this is a, this is a 35 acre mixed use development. This was probably going to become one of the, um, you know, most vibrant parts of the city in the future. Um, and, and the way we master planned it, uh, when, I, when I arrived at the campus, uh, there was already an existing master plan. And, uh, you know, I looked at it and I said, well, this is good. What about the trees? So everyone's looking at me like, what about the trees? So we said, okay, how about we look at it slightly differently? And um, when we redid the master plan, we found that we were able to save 85% of the trees. Now, these are 100-year-old rain trees, which are just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, you cannot miss them when, you, when you're driving past that, that site. On the other hand, there was this beautiful industrial legacy of our group. I mean, we are a group 119 years old. And, you know, there was this set of industrial buildings, these co-generator plants. Yeah. They used to take the excess energy from the soap factory and turn it into electricity, and they were defunct after the factories moved out. And, and I'd go to that site, and I'd look at those buildings, and I'd talk to them in my head. Obviously, I'd talk in my head because people would think I'm crazy, and what is he smoking, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when I looked at regulations around adaptive reuse, there isn't any. Right? So you have to work with the authorities. There just isn't any rules around that kind of development. So you know, there's a set of buildings, the, the co-generation plants. And, and what we did was, firstly, we won the battle to save them. Uh, we repurposed them uh, into uh, what is now our experience center. Uh, we used very interesting materials to repurpose them. We used a material called Corten steel. Again, we didn't want to lose the aging patina yeah. of these buildings, uh, even how we designed the shading devices. And, and we've kept a lot of it true to, to the nature of the site. Uh, you know, in Vikroli, when you walk and you know, when you look up, you always see the sky through the, the foliage of the trees. Yeah. So what we did was we perforated the shading device. So every time the light filters in and you look up, you, you kind of you see that poetry. And when you look down, you have this beautiful pattern of, of, of light and, and, and shadow. You know, we did other interesting things, and, and a lot of this is about storytelling. Tell us about the structure of three. So we worked with young artists, um, and the project that, uh, the, the, that Lakshmi is talking about is uh, what we call the cabinets of curiosity. 
And you know, what we did was we preserved the silos. There are these huge silos on the site. And we preserved them and we made art installations out of them. You know, one of the fun, fun bits was that how do you cut a silo? How do you write an RFP for that? So we found ship cutters actually from the yard to come in and help us cut the silos. We said, these are cabinets of curiosity, the past, present, and the future. We have a, a really uh, great uh, archive, uh, and we, um, we met, went and met them, and we found that um, the first ballot box of independent India was made by Godrej. Yeah. So we, we, we found other stories. We found that Rabindranath Tagore actually endorsed our soap, vegetable soap, way back when. So, you know, all these stories we found in, we, in the past silo, we've kind of showcased it. So you walk into the silo, you'll open a cupboard and you'll be greeted with something, you know, a blast from the past kind of thing. Uh, in the present silo, what we did was we said we wanted to be about people. So we took a cross section of a lot of people that work on the campus, all the way from office boys to all people who've been associated with Godrich. And we put their pictures up. And on the reverse side of the picture, we asked them to write a little anecdote about working there. And we found that people have been working at the, at the campus or at the group for 50 years, 60 years. And there's so many stories to tell. In the, in the future silo, we, quite, we didn't know what to do, right? So this is what happens. You, you start out and, and you're like, okay, past, present, future, everything's great. What do you do in the future? So we said, well, the future is yet to be determined. We put a big swing there. It's going to be a swinging future. Yeah. So, you know, you can come in and we put a little periscope and in the periscope you can peep in and you get glimpses of what all we are working in, so what yeah. the future will look like. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, it's been a very enriching personal journey for me. Um, and, you know, I invite anybody who's coming to Bombay to come and just discover. And the point I'm making is that, look, you can do the right thing. You can be sustainable. You can deliver for business. Even on the business side, you know, with now... There were a lot of people who thought that, well, what is the point of doing something like this? Yeah. And, and I, think, I think everyone stands corrected. Whoever didn't believe in it, you know, they've, they've come and fallen in love again with the site. And I guess we should do that with our cities. I mean, it's heartbreaking to me. Every city I go to in India, uh, you know, we're destroying our heritage, our culture, whatever's there. I mean, there's so much there. So we just need to look back and say, hey, this is there. We can do all the new, new cool stuff, but we should keep... Uh, some of this. This is what the site looked like when I would visit there and say, and everyone thought, this is just nutty. You should, you should just take this away. This is what we made out of it. Um, thank you. And you can see the silos there. Uh, that's what the, the, you know, what Lakshmi was talking about, what I was trying to explain to you. You know, again, we cut silos and, and we made benches out of it. We did this little trail. So we wanted this mode of discovery. So if you came to the, the campus, you could follow this little, you know. Poem, actually, it's a poetry. Yeah, and, and we've inscribed poetry in Morse code on it. That's, my team tells me it's a poem. It could be cuss words. I have no idea. I've never decoded it, right? <laughs> so you've got to come and see it. And it glows at night. And it, it, you know, it goes through all the points of interest in the complex. And, you know, our headquarters building is right on the other side, which is a, a, another beautiful building. And, you know, I just wanted to leave you with that contrast that, you know, the new and the old uh, can coexist in this very sustainable uh, way. So don't, don't just pass it by, the, the opportunities to do such things. Great. Thank you so much, Anubhav. Thank you.